It's Sunday once again and it's our joy to come together one more time to worship the Lord as one family and as a part of God's kingdom. Hello there to you all, People's Church family and friends. It's a joy to have you with us on this Sunday service and I know that as you stay with us over this next one hour that you are going to be blessed because the presence of God is going to be with us. So trust God for something great to happen in your life because He has something special for you. Let me ask you a question. What battles have you been battling over the past week? What challenges are you facing right now? Can you believe that in this one hour, God can minister to that need and give you a mighty breakthrough because He is going to be with us as we go through our service today. So stay together with us, worship the Lord together with us, put your comments on the comment section and may we be able to enjoy the presence of God as we worship together. A reminder that today is Communion Sunday, so in case you're not prepared as yet, Please ensure that you get some, maybe some biscuits or some bread as well as some uh, juice or soft drink or even some water so that you can uh, share the emblems together and join us in the act of Holy Communion. Nothing can separate Even if I ran away Your love never fails Mistakes, but you have new mercies for me every day. Your love never fails. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. Sing that again. You make all things. You make 
changes. You're a God who never fails. That you're a God who's always with us, Father. We just thank you and we bless you, Lord.
You're never giving up on us, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. We exalt you. We glorify your name. What a joy it is to praise you, to worship you, and to bring honor to your name, O oh God. We thank you because you are always faithful to your children. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Right now, we want to take some time to pray. And first of all, we want to pray for your needs and pray that God will minister to your need today. Whatever challenge you are facing, as I asked you right at the beginning of this service, God is able to come through. His promises are still true in our lives. And then we want to pray against COVID-19 as well. So let's join together in prayer. Would you hold hands with whoever is next to you? Raise your hands, maybe, maybe touch the uh, computer screen or the TV screen so that we can just agree together and believe God for a miracle in your life. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I first of all want to pray for the needs of everyone who has joined us on this service today, O oh God. Lord, each one of us may be having, each one of them may be having their own challenges and battles, Lord. And in Jesus' name, I pray for a mighty breakthrough in their lives, Lord. I pray for healing. I pray for deliverance wherever it is needed, O oh God. I pray for guidance. Lord, I pray for added strength, O oh God. And I pray, Lord, that today in this service right now, the mighty hand of Jesus will touch them right at the point of their need, O oh God. And they will see the blessing of God coming upon their life, the grace of God coming upon their life, the victory coming upon their lives, O oh God, in the coming week. Bless the families, Lord. Bless their children, I pray, Lord. And I ask that in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we want to pray against COVID-19 and we pray for your continued grace upon the nations of the world, Lord. First of all, we want to thank you, Lord, for protecting our land, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for all the efforts put in by the authorities, my God. Bless them for their efforts and keep this nation safe under the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. But we also pray for the nations that are still battling, Lord, with lockdowns and, and uh, hospital overloads, Lord, that you will undertake, O oh God. You will answer, Lord. You will bring about, Lord, a solution to this problem, Lord, so that before this year is over, Lord, that we could say goodbye to COVID-19, O oh God. Bless governments, Lord. Bless their leaders. Give wisdom, Lord, to overcome, Lord, this difficulty in their lands, O oh God. We pray your blessing in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. It's a blessing for us to have you join us today to share around the Lord's table as we partake of the Lord's Supper. What a joy it is to remember what Jesus did for us on the cross thousands of years ago when he went there to die and give his life and his blood for the sins of the whole world, including yours and mine. So today, before we partake at the Lord's table, I would like to read a portion of scripture written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let me read the words of the Apostle Paul. He says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For when you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Those were the words of the Apostle Paul taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I would like you to join me right now as we partake of the Lord's Supper together. You know, the broken body of Jesus speaks to us of the healing that is available, that comes through the power of the cross in our lives. And it's a moment for you to receive God's healing into your life as well. So we pray and ask God's blessing right now. Father, we pray that as we partake, of this bread in remembrance of the broken body of Jesus Christ our Lord, that you will bring healing into our bodies, O God. Lord, whether it be physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing, whatever it may be, Lord, that we will receive the power of your healing into our lives today as we partake together, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Shall we all partake together right now of the bread? The Apostle Paul also reminded us that when we partake of this cup, 
that we remember the shed blood of Jesus, shed for the sins of the whole world and for your sin and for my sin. So as we partake together, let us just bow our hearts in prayer for a moment and come before the Lord in repentance so that we may receive his complete forgiveness and cleansing for all our sins through the precious blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. O oh Lord, we know that we are not perfect, Lord. We make mistakes, we fail you. But we thank you that the blood still flows from Calvary and it has the power to cleanse sin, Lord, even today. Lord, forgive us as we come before in repentance, O God. Forgive us of our sins, cleanse us. And may, as we partake, may this be a time of refreshing and cleansing, Lord, in your beautiful presence. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's all partake together as we remember the shed blood of Jesus Christ, our precious Lord. Father, we pray that you will make this moment a breakthrough moment in all our lives, O God. As we receive of your healing, as we receive of your forgiveness and your cleansing for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, my friends, we start a new series called Reset Your Life. We'll be looking at how to practically move from strength to strength and from victory to victory, believing the one who never lies, and that is God and God's word. We need to reset some things in our lives. You know, as we battle through this COVID-19 period, we need to do that. Uh, we have to keep to the basics and also stick to God's never changing word. You know, as we follow the word of God, we have no fear as God is not shocked by anything. You know, many are feeling the pressure uh, and are trying to balance many things to keep their heads above water. So today I'm going to practically talk to you from God's word about how to reduce your stress. So join with me as we go to People's Church and I want you to listen to the word God gave me as we reopened our church and this word that he gave me will bless you and if you follow the word of God, it's going to change your life. Let's pray together first. Father, we thank you for today and I thank you for the privilege we have of coming to your word. Lord, let Dishan decrease and the Holy Spirit increase. Give listening ears, receptive hearts, change our lives according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to talk a bit about relieving the pressure and what God's plan is on how to reduce your stress. And I'm reminded of a story. A man was driving down the road and in front of him was a pet store truck, right? A, 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 a truck from a pet store. And uh, it was an aluminium, uh, uh, it had aluminium back, you know, covered right around. So every time the truck would go and stop in front of a traffic light, the driver would quickly get down with a pole and beat on the aluminium side, bang, 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 then get back in and drive again and go to the next stop. And again, he stops and he gets down and hits the, the aluminium sides and he goes again. He did this about five times. The guy coming behind at the next stoplight, he also got off. He said, hey, what's with this beating the side of your truck with the pole? So the man, the driver, he said, you know, I've got two tons of pigeons in my truck. But my truck is a one-ton truck. He said, so I have to keep half of them in the air all the time. Now, I, I say that to you because some of you, that's what you are doing. You're trying to keep many things in the air. You're trying to balance. You're saying, I'm trying to balance this. I'm keeping all these balls in the air, and I don't know that I can make it. I'm a little bit overloaded. And you know, this is an unusual phenomena that's going around. It's called a pandemic. 
and it's not ending, not at least in a hurry. 2020 has been a different year. But I want to get your attention to where it should be. It should not be on the news or in anything else. It should be in God's word. Because, you know, I say this again. I said this many times in this last four or five months, or even on the screen. God did not get suddenly disturbed because COVID-19 came. God didn't say, oh my goodness, now what are we going to do? Angels, come around, because now COVID has come. Now what do we do? No, God was never shocked. How many can say amen to that? God was never surprised. God's word foretold a lot of things that are happening from 4,000 years to 2,000 years. You know, that is the real prophetic uh, 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 guidance that God gives us when he starts to tell us and his children, those who believe in his word, and he lays the path for you. You know, a lot of you have got prophecy and word of knowledge mixed up. A word of knowledge is when there is no knowledge, God gives knowledge and says, there's a sister here, you have this, or this is going to happen in your life. And a, a prophetic word, a lot of the times, is for everybody. And your prophecies come directly from the word of God. So don't be so alarmed. Don't be like, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? Oh, I'm, hey, God's word never fails. What he said he will do, right? I'm going to take you to Matthew 11, just three verses, verses most of you know well. And Jesus gives you everything you need to know about resetting your life and about reducing your pressure and reducing your stress. So I want everybody to read. Get your Bibles, turn to Matthew 11. If you don't have Bibles, look at the screen, um, right? And we're going to read verses 28 to 30, but please, we're going to read it loud. Then, then Jesus, Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. You know, this verse is so filled with good stuff. I want to focus on a few things that we need this. Uh, you know, I've read this from the time I was a kid. I, I know this by memory. But I haven't had the impact that it has had like now, because maybe, I know you, you may have understood it better than me, I didn't understand all the ramifications of what, Jesus was saying here, you know, it says, if you do three things first, right? What are the three things? Come, then take, and learn. If you do the come, the take, and the learn, the Bible says, you will find rest for your souls. That goes beyond a good night's sleep. That goes to you being calm. That goes to you never taking a tablet to fall asleep. That goes to let you know that you don't have to worry, you don't have to fret, but you have to do these three things, right? So to reset, to reduce stress, the first step is, number one, write this down. If you, if you have a pen and paper, otherwise write it in your heart. The first thing you do is something we all know, but maybe we haven't looked at the whole aspect of it. Come to Jesus. What do you do? Can you say it loud? Come to Christ. Turn to Christ. Right? Many people come to Christ for a lot of reasons. Right? Some people came to Christ because they had a problem. Some came to Christ because they had a question. Some came to Christ because of an illness. Some came to Christ because there was a death in the family. And some came to Christ or came to Jesus to trap him. You see, people come for many, many reasons. It's interesting that no matter what reason people came to Jesus, Jesus never criticized them. He never made them look like fools. Right? Because he wanted them to come. But, you know, today I want to show you what I've seen more lately. You know, and, and you've seen this. I know I've seen it too. But it means a lot more during COVID-19. This is not an area that you normally think about. Why do we come to Jesus? Normally we come to Jesus to get saved. 
We want salvation. Or we come to Jesus for forgiveness. We come to Jesus for wisdom. I don't think there's another place, unless it's in Psalms or Proverbs, that, that, that in a regular story it says, come to Jesus so you can have rest. So you can have mental rest. You can have spiritual rest. You can be rested. You can be calm. You don't have to be so weary. I will give you rest. That's what we need today. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me, all of you who are weary, carry heavy burdens, and I will not just take your burden and put it on a side. I won't, you know, just ease your burden a bit. What does it say? I will give you rest. Friend, listen to me. The devil's I would say the number one tool he's using to destroy Christians, especially in these last days, he used a lot of tools in time, is to take away your rest. He's robbing your peace. Some of you who could sleep well can't sleep well anymore. He's taking your peace. He's bringing in anxiety. He's bringing all the cousins of fear. Anxiety, worry, trouble, all that. And he's bringing it to you and, and saying, you know, okay, this is normal part of life because now we are going on this end time journey. I want to tell you, Jesus says, no, you come to me. Hallelujah. You come to me. I will give you what? Rest. You know, this rest is not just a, a physical rest. Right? It's not because your muscles are tired. You know, you're gone and you exercise too much and now he's giving you rest. I mean, some of us need to exercise more. If you're flabby and you're not exercising, you're in trouble, right? Don't look at me. I'm well covered today. <clears throat> um, but this is talking more, not about that rest. It's talking more about, not like overworked muscles, but it's talking about your mind. Some of you have overworked mind, overworked anxiety. You have overworked tension. It's soul rest. Jesus says, when you are stressed out, the first thing you need to do is come to me. You know, think about it. A lot of the time when you're stressed out and when you don't know where to look, where, what do you come to? What do you go to? A lot of people go to the couch. They go to the TV. They flip through that. I want to tell you, if the TV is your place of rest, and getting your mental rest and your spiritual rest, you're in big trouble. And I'm telling you, sometimes when you start flipping through for rest, the TV, it, all it does is it doesn't take your stress away. It gets your other motor working. The lustful motor. The motor that brings sinful temptation. Right? Some people, when they want to get released from stress, they go and take a long bath or a hot bath or a shower. Some eat a lot. Some get into sex. Some then go and step further into drugs. But most people, to get away from the stress, they go and take the shot. Not much. The putty shot? How many of you have the putty shot? You know, I'm not a drunkard. I don't know, but I do the shot. Okay, I'm not here to preach on that today. But what I'm trying to tell you is, Jesus is not telling you to come to anything else. Listen, I'll tell you one more thing. Jesus doesn't even say, come to church. He doesn't even say, come to the Bible. He says, come to me. A lot of the times we get caught up even in religious curtains that we hide behind. He says, no, you come to me. I want to commune with you. I want to tell you, I'll say this. My father said this, I've said this a hundred times, there are no superstars in the kingdom of God. There are only children. You are a child of God. You have all the right to the father's presence. Well, come to him then. Don't even come to the pastor. Come to him. First hand. He says, come to me. Come to me. This is not about salvation today. This is not even about, you know, having forgiveness, getting wisdom. This is about Having rest, walking in peace, in confidence, not going around like I'm a child of God, but I'm like a chicken with my head cut off. 
and I probably bring more detriment to the kingdom. Isaiah 40:31, another familiar portion of scripture. Isaiah 40:31 says this. But those who wait upon God get fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and don't lag behind. Amen. Pass it. All common scriptures now today. I know this. I sing this also. Yeah, I'll tell you what. That's what I told myself. There are a lot of things in the Bible I need to reread. Because God brings revelation out of the same thing. He can bring it five or hundred different ways. How many can say amen? You see, he says you get fresh strength. This comes from God. Right? And he brings this into you to emotionally, spiritually, mentally bring you the strength that you need. Those who wait on God. That's your quiet time. I need to stop here for a moment and tell you this. You know, during COVID-19, some of you prayed like you have never prayed before. You took the time. But you had no place to go. Some of you read the word. God fed you. Right? You got close to God. Some of you sat with your families and you ate together, which is the most spiritual thing you could have done because you hadn't done it in a long time. All those things are spiritual, by the way. They're God-ordained. But you know what happened? The curfew was lifted. And what are we doing? God shows us that there are some things in our Christian lifestyle that needs changing. My friend, look at some of the most powerful nations in the world. In two days, they were flattened out. Some of the strongest, biggest people in the world went into hiding in the middle of March. Because God decided that he is going to show his hand. I know economically we will struggle. There are a few other things, but I don't know about you. I can tell you one thing. I read the word of God. You and I are not going to remain here forever. This is a place you're passing through. If you haven't recognized that, then I, I tell you good luck to you. You're in big trouble. This is a path we walk on. So what happens? COVID comes and we get some good habits back. We're praying, we're reading. Then we are waiting now to crawl back into our old habits. Because we think that is normal. I want to tell you, you better go and look and see in your life what is really normal. What does God really want from you? I'll tell you what God doesn't want. He doesn't want you crawling and running and fasting and praying because your child is in trouble. Or because your business is in trouble. Or because your marriage is in trouble. No, he wants to walk with you every day when things are good and fine. Because he loves you like a parent loves a child. I don't need my child coming and saying, oh, Tati, you're so wonderful. You're great. Now, can I have that 5,000? No, I want him to love me when he doesn't want anything. You see, going back to quiet time. Quiet time is the time you spend with God. Now, some of you, especially you men, you've already given up. If I talk to you, say, my pastor, my wife, of course, she will pray for two hours. She goes to the prayer room at home also. She'll pray and all that. You know, I, of course, hey, who told you that you had to pray for two hours? Quiet time doesn't mean two hours. Doesn't mean that that person prays for three hours. So you have to be, no, it means you and God. I don't talk to my children for three hours and two hours. But there is a time, there is a moment that you spend and you commune. And God says, wait on me. Because you can't face what this world is going to throw at you in the, next, in, in, in the future times that you're going to face unless you wait on him. Every day, take some time. Wait on him. Don't put legalistic rules. Today I couldn't pray for my hour. Oh, five minutes, five minutes to go. No, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's all rubbish. What do you think? You're in a classroom with a school teacher? No. You're in a relationship. Some days you pray for 
18 minutes. Some days you can pray for one hour, 20 minutes. It, it doesn't matter. But they that wait upon the Lord. They, not legalism. I am sick and tired of legalism. I want to tell you, if PCAG has too many legalistic rules, please talk to the pastors. We talk every week. We talk about everything. We try to improve everything we can. We know we don't have it all right. But we listen to people. Right? I'm telling you because we don't want legalism. We want communion with God. That's what I want you to have. I better get going. Um, so, wait on the Lord. That's where you get your strength. Notice he didn't say, come to anything else. He said, come to me. Come to Christ. The second thing he says is, take his yoke. Take his yoke. Let's read 11.29. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. No, I got to explain this. Because some of you, you think the yoke is that uh, yellow part of an egg that you have in the morning. Right? Now, this is not the Y-O-L-K. This is the Y-O-K-E. This yoke, right, is, let, let's look at this picture. This yoke, this is a yoke, right? This is where you put two animals, right? If you put a single one, it's called a harness. But here is a yoke. Right, you put two animals, and Jesus is saying here, take my yoke upon you. And some of you are saying, my goodness, how can I take his yoke? I can't even manage my life. How can I manage what he's trying to put on me? He says, take my yoke upon you. And you're saying, my, that sounds like more burdens. No, I want to tell you, that's not the purpose of the yoke here. He's saying, no, this is a light one. This is an easy one. Right? The yoke actually is because you want to make it lighter, where you can put two animals. Right? So you take two animals and you put them in yoke. So the burden is divided 50%. I, I, I'm putting this picture up because I want you to get it. Some of you are pulling the cart alone. Some of you are going alone. Some of you are giving up. You're giving up on your marriage. You're giving up on your kids. You're giving up on your finances. You're giving up on your future. You're just resigning. Why? You're pulling alone. You're, it's the harness. It's only you. Jesus says, no. Put, take my yoke upon you. Immediately it's divided into 50%. But this gets even better. Right? It gets better because Jesus is saying, when you come into the yoke, you're not alone. I, I want to tell you, I don't know whether you heard this last few weeks, the number of suicides in our nation. I was very shocked at that boy in Singapore who went in and, you know, nine A's and so studying and suddenly finds out that there was a fine imposed and whatever the situation, the hope was lost. How can he pull it alone? And he committed suicide. So many cases this last month. But I want you, as, 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 a, as a child of God, put that picture again, right? I want you to look at that. It's 50% shared. You know, what God is asking you is, take my yoke upon you. What is it? It's a partnership. Bring me into this partnership with you, in your marriage, in your business, in your, with your children. Whatever you are worried about, bring me into it. A lot of people come to God only for a few things in their life. And then they want to do the rest by themselves. He says, no, take the yoke. I come in as your partner. You know what the greater part of this story is? In this partnership with Jesus, right? This partnership with God. He doesn't put... Now, in this partnership, that cow has to bear... This cow's burden also. Right? This cow will have to bear that cow. There is that partnership. But the partnership he's telling you is, my yoke has no burden. Hello? Are you with me? My yoke, the si that side, go back to the other picture, the, 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 that, that one side which is his, is empty. There is no burden. 
He's saying, I have no burden. That's why I am God. The only burden I have is you. Wow. The only burden God has in this partnership is me. Do you get it? Your faces, I can't say anything. Yes, hello? Are you with me? Right? So then you can see the next one where you can go in a cart and pull it along. And I got a real bucky karate there. Right? And you, you, you can move in partnership with him. Psalm 55, 22. Psalm 55, 22 says this. Give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. Amen. And by the way, I want to remind you, God has a better back than yours. Your back is going to give up, give out. Your shoulders are not strong, neither are mine. But God's shoulders are strong. God's back can take your load. He will see you through. He'll lighten your stress. He says, my yoke is easy. Is your yoke easy? Probably not. I want to tell you, if you're feeling overloaded right now, you're feeling stressed, and you're, you're feeling like you can't bear it, I want to tell you this because you're not yoked with Christ properly. If you, are, you come, you said the sinner's prayer, you know, it's like some of you, you're saved, but you're stressed. You know you're going to heaven, but you're stressed. That's because you have forgotten the partnership. You know, when you're yoked together with him, you don't have to be so stressed because he carries the load. He walks with you. You know, if you're not yoked to Christ, if you're that symbol, that yoke is a symbol of partnership. If you're not yoked to Christ, I want to tell you, you're going to be yoked to something else. Friend, listen to me. Some of you, you're yoked to your business. You're yoked to making the money. You're yoked to, to somehow uh, uh, putting it all there. So what has happened? Your work has become your master. Some of you, you're yoked and in the desire to acquire things. Got to get this. Got to get that. Got to have this. Some of you, you're yoked to other people's expectations. I know people who are 55 years old and still trying to fulfill the expectations of their parents who are dead and gone. You see, you have to be free. You have to realize God has a plan and purpose for you. And I want to tell you, if you want to get yoked, please get yoked to the easiest thing. Verse 30 says this. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. My yoke is easy to bear. The burden is light. You know what he's saying? I want to say this. I wrote this last night late. It came to my mind. God will never lead you to a place and leave you there. Never. God will never take you to a place or take you down a certain path and get you to commit. And you know it's God and he'll never leave you there. He will never let you handle more than you can bear. You know why people commit suicide? They commit suicide because they have no partnership. They're not yoked to Christ. They're yoked to whatever. And then they suddenly feel like they have to handle things they can never bear. When you come to a place, please listen to me. Some of you, some dreadful thoughts have gone through your mind. Listen to me. When you come to the place where you think, my goodness, I can't bear this anymore. You have to come to Christ. You have to get back to the yoke. You have to come into the partnership. Because he will never let you down. How many can say amen? He'll never let you down, never leave you. The final thing in that passage, it says, learn from me. Learn from me. That's the third secret to stress management. What does it say, Matthew eleven twenty nine? Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Follow the model of Jesus. Watch how he did it. See how he balanced his life. 
and how sanity came into what he did. You know, you learn this only from Jesus, not from Dr. Phil or Dr. Fauci, right? Only Dr. Jesus knows how to do this, how to be balanced, how to more. He says, learn from me. In the other version, it says, I will teach you, right? Learning is a pro process, remember. It takes time to learn. You know, you didn't develop this stressed out, burdensome, overloaded, hyper-driven lifestyle in one day. So you're not going to get better also in one day. But you're going to get into the process and he's going to lead you and he's going to take you from victory to victory. Amen? What can you learn from Jesus? Let me teach you, he says, because I am, verse 29, I am humble and gentle at heart. What can you learn from him? Be humble and be gentle. You know, when I read this, I was thinking, why did he put humble and gentle here? You should have put things like being confident and having endurance. Or have courage and strength. That's how you beat this stress. That's how you beat this pressure. Or he, or he just said, I will teach you time management and goal setting. No, he doesn't. What does he say? He says, I'll teach you to be humble and to be gentle. Why does he say these two things? I want you to get this as we close. He says this because the two greatest sources of stress in your life, they come from aggression and arrogance. Aggression and arrogance. Aggression, where we have to do it, have to do it now, have to do it our way, can't wait, you know, uh, no time to delay, let's do, let's go, let's get it all done, blam, 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 blam. But then on top of that comes arrogance. How do we get arrogant? We try to control everything, our way or the highway. I have to have it. I'm going to do it. Nobody has. I'm going to do. I'm going to show them what I can do. It's going to be. So you do more than you are actually able to do. Or you try to do that. And you get even more stressed. It kills you. You know, my heart has been bleeding over the mediocrity of the church. And the fact that God's people can be so busy doing God's work while actually hurting God's heart because of bad attitudes, unresolved conflicts, judgment, criticism, direct disobedience also to the word, and for, because of pride. You see, we have time for criticism, judgment, hammering somebody else down, but we don't have time to sit and say, Lord, I want to be humble. I want to be like you. I want to have your heart. I want to be somebody who will walk the way you walked. You've tried a lot of things. I want to suggest to you, why not try trusting God? Just do that. Most of you have. If you're struggling, do it. Proverbs 20, 24 says, The Lord directs our steps. So why try to understand everything along the way? Some of you think if you understand why you are going through what you're going through, you'll be okay. You know, I can tell you, I'll guarantee. Even if you know why you went through what you're going through or you have to go through, it won't solve your problem. Knowing it doesn't, but God is the one who solves the problem. You know, we get various invitations for graduations, for weddings, for receptions, parties, for dinners. But this, my friend is the greatest invitation that you can receive. So you will have mental health. You will have great rest. You will have peace that passes all understanding. And this invitation comes from Jesus. He says, come to me. He says, come to me. All of you who are weary, all of you who are heavy laden with burdens, Take my yoke. Partner with me. I'll teach you. I'll teach you like I am humble and I am gentle. And then you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear. And the burden I give you is light. He giveth more grace. 
God's word never fails. Like I said before, we get various invitations for graduations, weddings, parties, dinners. But this invitation from Matthew 11, 28 to 30, come to me with your burdens when you're weary. And the Lord says, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke and I will teach you. And you will find rest for your souls. You know, my friend, I want to pray with you. I don't know what's weighing you down. Maybe many things in life. Maybe you can't raise your head up. But like you heard in God's word, you heard with a life story. I want you to believe. And even as you believe and we give our burden to God, God is going to set you free. Bow your heads, close your eyes, and let's pray together. I want you to believe. Take your right hand, put it on your heart. Raise your left hand to heaven and believe in your heart. And even as you believe, God will make the difference in your life. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray that right now, I pray for every man, woman and child listening. Lord, that you would bless them, that you would touch them, that you would lift their burdens as they come to you. Lord, you will partner with them so that you can carry them through no matter what they're going through and that you would teach them. Lord, I pray for each one that as they give their hearts and their burdens over to you, they would never have to shoulder it again. 
we know your shoulders are strong ours are not so we pray that as you take these burdens lord that you will set each one free in the name of jesus thank you for hearing our prayer in jesus name amen and amen well it's time to close our service for this sunday thank you for being with us right through this hour and i know i'm sure i believe that you have been blessed by all that has been a part of this service thank you for joining us in worship as well and for joining us in our times of prayer may the word of god continue to speak to you right through the week as well at this time i just want to remind you once again about the prayer hotline the number is on your screen if you need someone to talk to or someone to pray with you please call our prayer hotline do not hesitate and then the hour of hope happens every friday at 6 o'clock sri lanka time so please do join us on the hour of hope and be a part of what god is doing through that ministry as well god bless you uh, keep all the precautions that are necessary to stay safe but remember that our safety eventually comes from jesus christ our lord have a blessed week in him and may your life be blessed right through this coming week and we'll see you next sunday at the same time god bless you